you know, that was our best defensive quarter. Um, I mean, I know they didn't shoot the ball well in the first uh, first quarter, but you know, to hold the team, you know, 25 points and 42 from the field, I thought was terrific. Um, you know, once again, we got timely stops and made big plays. Um, you know, and you could argue the lucky plays, but you know, we had to have them, and guys stepped up and made them. What was the difference with the defense in the fourth? Bottom line was just did it a little. <laughs> there's a little bit more effort, and you know, I thought throughout the second half. Um, we just did a you know better job of trying to keep the ball in front, um, giving multiple effort, getting in the gaps and so on strengths. Um, you know, they were living in our paint the first half, and I, we did a much better job in the second half of trying to limit that. Um, obviously open to three a little bit, but, you know, it, uh, it, it, it was better than, you know, the alternative. You said you wanted to kind of give Spencer just some more shooters around and put the ball in his hands more. How do you think he did tonight with that? I thought it was good. I mean, his level of aggression, um, I think 10 assists and no turnovers. We and collectively had zero turnovers in the fourth, which is big for us. Um, being able to take care of, take care of it and value possessions, um, just to ensure you get a shot up, you know, I think that helps. And, in a number of ways, you know, even on the defensive end, you're full balanced and you got a chance to get back. Coach, was that first half defensively one of those care factor first half? Um, I wouldn't characterize it as such. Um, I didn't think we played with the same level of energy as we did in the second half. Um, there were some coverage breakdowns, but I, I didn't feel I didn't feel that way as far as it being a, a care factor. No. It was more, in my, in my opinion, it was more the, just the lack of communication and uh, in, in our breakdowns. Um, you know, that their cutting hurt us, you know, off ball movement. Um, the downhill attacks and some of that is it's tough. Shea's, he's exceptional. He's the number one, two, uh, I'm sorry, the second offensive uh, or ISO score rather in the league. So that's what he does. And, you know, early I thought he uh, just saw daylight and got downhill. And we did a better job as the game went along, trying to show bodies and keep keep them in front. Kyle gets downhill. Why is he as effective as he is? In other words, it, 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 we know it's not effortless, but he makes it look that way at times. Right. Well, I mean, he he is six ten. You know, so I think people don't realize that with his size, um, his ability to play off the bounce, he he gets to a spot. You know, he's a, he's a big guy, so he uses his body, his leverage. He creates and initiates contact. It's it's tough to guard. Rui came in late in the game a couple times on defense. Uh, what kind of versatility does he give you? Well, it goes back to that, you know, that size, you know, component. You, you can switch with him. He He's able to keep guys in front, move his feet. You know, his size allows him to rebound. Um, but just kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility um, when you quote unquote downsize. You know, you're really not going small. And what kind of impact does he give you in the paint on offense? Well, you know, we're still learning that. But I think, you know, he, he can get downhill, especially to his left hand. Uh, he initiates contact and, and creates, carves out space. Um, so I, I, I want to see more of it, you know. And we got to help put him in positions to uh, get those opportunities. But, you know, I think he can do that with ease. Um, I think his ball skills have improved. Uh, I've seen him shoot the ball. Um, exceptionally well, you know, through this, you know, stretch here. Um, it hasn't yes, necessarily translated into the game, but it, but it will. And so I think that's going to be an added dimension for him. Two different guys hit some plus threes today in the fourth quarter. What, what do you make of that? Is it nice, nice to have you know, guys that are able to step up in the fourth? Oh, it's huge. I mean, it's, uh, it's invaluable when you have those guys who aren't afraid of the moment. And uh, I give those guys a lot of credit because they, you know, they're coming from, uh, situation where they've won a championship so Kyle's done it Pope's done it you know Corey made big plays tonight so you know it's good to see him kind of reap the benefit you know I think he puts a lot of time and work and you know hasn't shot the ball great as of late so to see him going tonight was uh was good for him uh but yeah Pope and those guys um they've done it all year and you know it's 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 why they're here and that's why they're going to continue to be a big part of what we do well, it's great to see him out there. I mean, his energy, his voice, um, that's what he does. You know, I, and I think it's important because we haven't had that in a while. But uh, he's he just brings that energy, that excitement. Um, he's going to get you those second possessions. He's going to get on the rim. Um, he's a guy you can play through in the post. Um, so I think it just, just gives us another layer, another guy we can play through. 
Frank and Ms. Dooney, how did Corey look tonight just in terms of his comfort level and his, uh, just seemed like he was more uh, playing rather than taking the uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, I thought he, uh, you know, initially we had him on, on, on Dort to start the game and you know, that's a tall task um, you know, to keep a guy like that in front. And he was, I thought he did a you know solid job there. He made a huge play late. You know, it was a big block, um, you know, in the paint, you know, save a layup. Uh, so I think he's, he's, he had an all around great, great night. You know, I think it's, um, it's good to see him kind of get back and make shots, but for him to make those defensive plays and be in the right spot, I think it's uh, it gives not only himself confidence, but gives us confidence that you know he can he can play in those moments. Coach was saying that uh, he was literally texting his teammates on his watching game from home. Have any of those ever reached you? Uh, we we did text quite a bit, and um, <laughs> you know it's you know just more so to check up you know see how he was feeling you know where he was at. I asked him you know you know what do you see and you know because it's always. You know, we look through it. We look at it as through a certain lens, and sometimes, you know, when a player is not involved, they have a different perspective. So, uh, you know, and I did the same thing with all those all those guys. But um, I'm glad he was watching. I'm glad he was reaching out to guys and, and and staying as connected as you can. You know, given his circumstance, because you know it uh, uh, doesn't always happen. So it was good good that he uh, was doing that. Neil. Hey, Coach, you talked about the communication as some of the defensive breakdowns. Is that just because of new personnel? They have a lot of young players, not a lot of film on them, or is there anything you can pinpoint on that? Well, I think some of it is that, um, you know, you, you play a team, you know, in the West twice a year, and, um, you know, they've changed the rotation quite a bit, but uh, that's no excuse. I mean, you, you get your scouting report, you get your player edit. Uh, we go through the personnel, so... Um, there should be, you know, a certain base. Um, but, you know, once again, Shea, you know, uh, Lou Dort, those guys are dynamic downhill players. And, you know, you think you're in front, but you're not. I mean, they do a great job of, you know, creating angles and, you know, attacking and getting downhill, opening things up. You know, Josh does it as well. His, his playmaking is cutting. Um, you know, so it's it's not just, you know, you, you don't know it, but I don't know, you, you realize how uh, dynamic it is to you have to go through and experience it. And we joked about this last time and maybe I missed one time, but two times now, freshly shaven win, you're gonna <laughs> keep it coming more? Um, uh, I don't know, I gotta ask my wife. <laughs> Thanks coach. Christos. Hello coach, congratulations on the win, first of all. Thank you. Uh, how satisfied uh, you are on the way that your team react in the last three minutes, especially on the defensive effort, and what Montrez will bring on that uh, on the table for you at this point of the game? Well, uh, you know what, I was very pleased with how we responded. Um, you, you know, we, we kept talking about, hey, we got to get our defense into the game, and obviously, fourth quarter, um, you know, it's winning time, and we were able to do that. So it's it's important, to, obviously, at that junction of the game. But you know, we can't wait. Uh, you, you'd like to see more of that throughout. We're not going to play a perfect 48-minute game, but uh, being able to sustain that level, um, you know, that level of, of effort, concentration, of connectivity, I think is important as far as, uh, you know, really, you know, uh, winning at a, at a high level. Uh, we can't turn it off and on. And so I think that the more we can do that, and, uh, the better. Um, and then Trez, he's a part of that. You know, he, his energy, um, his voice, his his passion for the game, I think, is important. Um, it, it brings life and pulse to, the, to our group, and you know, it, it showed tonight. Thank you very much, Coach. Last question to Wayne. Hey, Coach. Um, those first three quarters, it seemed like SGA and Giddy were getting anything they wanted passing-wise. How did you all stop that in the fourth quarter? Honestly, it wasn't a whole lot, uh, you know, of uh, schematic changes. You know, I, th I thought our overall effort was better. Um, you know, we, we mixed and matched lineups to, to better switch, you know, to, to keep a better defender, you know, in those switch situations. But, and honestly, I just thought we were, um, we put forth a little bit more effort, uh, a little bit more energy. And I thought we, we played better as far as being on the same page. It, it wasn't anything dramatically different. Uh, we just decided to lock in and, and, get, and get it done. Also, coach, usually in the NBA, it's a lot of travel. With the eight-game homestand, 
what are you looking forward most to keying in on uh, taking advantage of this? Well, you got to take it game by game. You know, we don't want to look too far down the line or, you know, worry about opponents, um, you know, throughout this month. The, the most important game is the next one. Um, so learn from tonight. Obviously, we, you're playing an opponent that we just played, so that should be fresh on our mind. They're, they're going to come in and play hard, you know, as we saw um, the Oklahoma City Thunder do. So yeah, we can't look past anybody. And it's just a uh, regroup, you know, make sure we're, we're locked in and ready to go tomorrow night. Uh, lastly, Coach, with the news of Thomas Bryant, how does it feel now to almost have the full team back uh, together? It's exciting. I mean, I think it's well overdue, and, you know, it's nobody's fault. It's just a situation we find ourselves in. So uh, it, it's going to take a little bit of time to kind of integrate and get guys on the same page. But, you know, I'd rather just rip the Band-Aid off and go for it instead of trying to, you know, ease our way into this and see how it looks. We've got a lot of guys who compete, a lot of guys who've won us, you know, a, a ton of games. So um, it's good to have that depth and flexibility. Um, and now you're adding two more guys that uh, can, can contribute at a high level. A couple weeks worth of games where you're getting more minutes because you're shortening. How huge is that for you? It's been, you know, one of the biggest things to happen for me this year. Um, you know, by luck of the draw or just kind of going home and not really seeing anybody, I was able to not catch COVID, stay healthy for, this, for that stretch. And um, it led, led me to more minutes and um, more playing time and experience. And every minute I'm out there, I feel more comfortable and feel better and better. So um, really happy that that, that, that happened and um, looking forward to more. I'm sure it feels like big leaps since it's, you know, you're learning from, you've got a lot to learn, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, what do you feel like you were able to uh, I just took a lot. I mean, it wasn't really, I mean, I, I'm playing the same game as I did the whole time. It was just, um, just being out there playing through mistakes, um, kind of just getting that pressure that I put on myself off my back, um, and playing with more freedom. Um, that was really it. I mean, nothing really changed as far as what I'm seeing or how the game's going. It's just, um, playing through mistakes, letting the pressure off myself and, um, you know, letting the results come. Oh, I mean, it was probably the dumbest thing I've ever done on a basketball floor. I mean, I was threw the ball up in the air to our own basket. Like that's that's like brain, like total brain fart. So uh, I knew it. They all knew it. Um, Gaff was telling me that he was standing right there. I didn't see him. Um, and then Trez was letting me know, you know, we had timeouts, um, you know, like let them come to you. I mean, he gave me a bunch of different advice, but at the end of the day, like I knew I messed up and they knew that too. So, um, just kind of give me little pieces of advice and, uh, moved on. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think it was like a step up screen and Gady got loose um, and I was a little out of position and um, was able to react quickly and make it over there in time and, um, you know, get my hand and challenge him. You know, that was the most important thing. I wanted to make sure it was tough on him to finish. Um, you know, getting the ball was kind of secondary. I just wanted to make sure that he was um, having to finish over somebody, uh, especially that late in the game. You can't give up easy baskets like that. So uh, right place, right time. Uh, made a good play. How great is it to have your son playing? Yeah, uh, it's awesome. Um, really, really good to see him out there, not only playing, but smiling, and having a great time and um, getting buckets and doing, doing what he does best. So um, nothing but happy for Rui. And um, I can speak for everybody that went to school at Gonzaga. And, you know, anybody that knows Rui personally, I was really happy to see him out there again. Any advice he's given you as you in that victory? Uh, no, I mean, you know, he's just he's just asked me kind of how I'm doing and, um, you know, kind of just sticking around here and there and just kind of, I mean, nothing, nothing like crazy advice. It's just, you know, we're friends, man. It's just um, feels like we're picking up back where, we're, back where we left off. And, um, you know, he and I um, share a really good bond. And so um, I'm sure there'll be more advice to come, but nothing so far. With a lot of 
Yeah, I mean, no, it's it's part of my game, you know. Like it's it's all the first option shoot, the second option shoot, and the third option shoot, and then the fourth options, you know, play off play off a closeout. So um, that's just kind of the way I was wired, and the way I've grown up to play, and um, those reads and those decisions just kind of come easy. And yeah, like you said, it's all about just trusting myself and um, letting those plays, you know, unfold after I make a decision. Neil. And Corey, I couldn't quite hear Zach's question, but what was your reaction to Rui's reverse dunk? Oh, it was, just, it was awesome. I, I, I mean, I knew he was, you know, getting conditioned and ready to go, but I don't know his legs were like that yet. So I've seen it before, and I'm, you know, I'm going to see it a thousand times again. But um, you know, another really good moment, moment for Rui. And then I know not necessarily the finish you won, but what did you think about your attempt uh, on Bas Basley got the little bit of the better of you? Yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't bring it up. Um, uh, I mean, he was, he was under the basket and the lane was wide open. So I thought I'd give it a try. And, you know, that's just, that's just what happens, man. If you play basketball long enough, you're going to get dunked on or you're going to get blocked. So, um, you know, if the opportunity presents itself, I'm, you know, I'm going to try again. Absolutely. Thanks, Corey. Hey, Corey, now that you're 41 games in, how does your comfort level feel, um, you know, playing this game? Are we halfway done? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that went by, that went by fast. Okay, 41 games. Wow. Um, more, I mean, uncomfortable. I'm getting more comfortable every single day, and I'm loving it. Um, yeah, wow, halfway. That's crazy. Um, the season's gone by so fast, and I've learned so much. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to what, you know, the second half brings. And lastly, Corey, uh, for tonight with a young team like OKC, uh, their, their passing is very underrated. Seeing that live for the first time, can you just kind of give a, 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 a player's perspective on it? You say they're passing? They're passing, yes. Yeah, I mean, they share the sugar. Um, that ball pops around, and um, they always find the open man and get open shots, and that's how they're able to stick around at night. So, um, you know, just because they're a young team doesn't mean they're, like, skilled i mean they I mean they're not skilled like they're a really really good team with really really good players and when they're playing that way um they're hard to cover uh, i mean like you just said i do it i'm i'm asked um yeah i mean surrounded by shooters uh playing a little bit more pick and roll. I mean, just trying to make plays, man. That's really, that's really it. Um, and make plays in my mind is an all-encompassing thing. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's going to be maybe as a screener for Brad, right? Sometimes it's going to be Pope gets downhill and I got to set a hammer for cool so he can get a corner three. You know, and then sometimes it also means the sexy stuff, you know, where I get to go score and other stuff that, you know, y'all like to talk about. Aaron, do you come in to appreciate that stuff more than the other stuff that Oh, no, I'm not going to say a lot of y'all. Like, everybody loves getting 20. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I, I understand that the sum is greater, you know what I'm saying, than, than any single individual. And so, you know, I understand sacrifice. And I've been in a lot of different points in my career. And I'm thankful to be here and, you know, everything that they've given me in terms of just, you know, believing in me. So I'm willing to sacrifice some aspects of my ego and things to try to have, you know what I'm saying, a better group in general. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think that with any rookie, their confidence grows with minutes and time and, and, and the leash to make a mistake. Um, and so you're just seeing uh, his game kind of continue to come out. And he's another smart basketball player, you know, knows when to cut, knows when to stay spaced and shoot and, and plays within himself, but is aggressive also within, like, what he is good at. So, you know, that's it's a really smart basketball player. And, you know, it's been a pleasure to, to have him as our rookie. Yeah, actually, I think a decisive is a great word, um, but it's super important. You know what I mean? I think uh, hesitancy is where mistakes are made. Um, you got to kind of trust your work, trust your process. And as long as you can look in the mirror and know who you are and be who you are, um, then there's no reason to be the best version of yourself. You know what I mean? After what you do, what ways do you think that 
pick up and why in the fourth quarter? Um, I, I just think the sense of urgency was there. I think um, obviously we slowed Shea down a little bit um, just in terms of also his style of shot attempts. I think, uh, you know, first half, you know, he had 18 or 20 points, just basically all layups. Like it was all rim attempts. Those are super easy. Um, and we started turning those into floaters and step backs, even if they are 10 footers or whatever. Um, you just want the shot profile to to be what the defense wants. It's not always uh, just about the makes or misses because some people are going to hit tough shots. I mean, you had Ty Jerome hit several different floaters that, you know, probably on another night he probably misses. And, and Josh Giddy hit a couple step back threes that maybe on another night he maybe misses. But, you know, as long as they're shooting the shots that our defense wants, then you have to kind of shake their hands because they're pros and they're going to make shots at times. But you never just want Shea, who's one of the obviously best young players in the league, just getting layups. What's your perspective on seeing Kyle be as effective as he's been? Do it in a way when he's getting downhill almost at will. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, uh, Kyle playing at a high level is a, a big key for our team. Um, you know, we, we, we talked about that early in the season. Uh, and for him, too, it's about being decisive. You know what I mean? The catch and goes, the, the getting into the paint, things like that. Um, not, you know, anything too wild, just, just playing good, good basketball. And you see he's a super talented guy. You know, 6'10", got a, got a little bit of everything to his game um, and just has a willingness to go out there and be great. How great is it to have Willie back out there? Because... Oh, big time. I think, um, you know, beyond just the morale lift, beyond having your brother back, I think um, he adds another dimension to this team. I think um, his athleticism is something that a lot of our other players don't really have. I mean, you see the way he went baseline off, you know, two dribbles and dunked in. You know what I'm saying? That was that was easy. That wasn't that wasn't a strain for him. And you know, uh Trez obviously is somebody that that gets those type of plays at the rim as well. Um and I'm talking about off the dribble and, and kind of more so obviously gaff lobs and stuff, but I think uh, it's just another dimension that Rui has that that nobody else uh, really has on our team and it's very unique. So, you know, being able to play three, four, five for us uh and you know, give us some switchable lineups two on defense where we switch one through five and, and go kind of big with, you know, Kuz, Denny. Um, really, you know, as kind of the, the midline or anchors of that group, I think it's going to be a uh, special to see. How much are you looking forward to being allowed to play tomorrow night? You know, it's a precautionary back to back with good for you. Um, no, I'm looking forward to it a ton. Uh, you know, I'm glad uh, COVID didn't uh, set anything back or anything like that. And, you know, it's Hopefully we can get a three game win streak. That's pretty much all I'm laser locked in on. Um just go there and play good basketball, man. It ain't, it ain't rocket science at the end of the day. Like what had to happen for you to play Oh, nothing. They just did a basically they set an arbitrary timeline of a year post stop. So it's nah, for real. Like you gotta remember, so when I got here or when I signed, right? You know, everybody was really like, hey, was that five and a half months thing real? And I'm like, bro, like, of course it was. Like, stop playing with me. Um, but they, no, I'm serious. They signed me like, hey, like, we're cool if you missed the first 15 games. And I was like, y'all tripping. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Uh, and, you know, had to come here and pass a variety of, you know, just force plate and all these other tests as well and sound the body scanner and all types of different things. And, you know, they were like, okay, I guess he wasn't a, uh, uh, BSing when you say he's ready to play, and that's why I ended up playing, you know, from the beginning and preseason and all that other stuff. And, you know, credit PJ on the training staff who works with me day in and day out to make sure we don't have any flare ups or anything bad going on. And, you know, the docs just said they felt more comfortable setting the year post op timeline. And this is the first back to back that is after January 4th. So that's pretty much just how it all came to fruition. But it wasn't, it wasn't nothing like too special where they were like, hey, like, you got to do this exactly like it was really just a year post op. Um, I just couldn't tell you all that because you know they like to trick people with the game plans and whatnot. But he's questionable. He's not. And then, but I knew this was the first back to back for a long time. So, man, yeah, nah, I got you, man. I've been, hey, I've been doing this a minute. Do you, do you feel like as the season has progressed that you've been getting a little bit healthier? That you things have been getting better with your knee? I mean, of course. You know what I'm saying to a certain extent. I mean. There's a lot of things that I did to to kind of come back this quickly and set this record, but there are certain things within biology that, you know, you, you can't change, right? They say, like, it's 
first year back is going to be hard and it's a two-year injury and like all this other stuff and just in terms of like getting all your legs and wind and all that stuff under you uh, I feel like I've done a good job of you know not making any excuses coming out to play every single night um, obviously as time continues to pass and work is put in and we squat more and deadlift more and add weight and you know just continue to build my body like throughout the season with different recovery modalities, BFR, like all the different stuff. Like, of course, I feel like I get stronger and better um, the further away from, you know, that that we get. And I think I'm obviously a healthy off season and next season and all that other stuff is going to be, you know, a, a, a big, you know, jump continuously. How does your mindset change when you guys not in the lineup? Oh, I mean, obviously, I just know the volume of possessions changes. Um, so that that's mostly the the thing at the end of the day and, and then you know the, the little nuances like I said you know instead of being a screener I'm probably gonna have more screens set for me and you know instead of being a little more of a catch and shoot guy like getting downhill making making more plays um and, and just, I mean at the end of the day like I said it's about reading the game you know what I'm saying so you know obviously there's more possessions try to be aggressive with those make as many plays you can and um you know try to win um yeah Neil. Hey, Spence. Um, Coach was saying that it wasn't necessarily a lack of effort for some of the defensive uh, miscues, but maybe more communication. What did you see from that aspect? Um, I mean, obviously a little bit of both. Uh, like I said, Shea had too big of a first half um, for sure. Um, secondarily, yeah, like we definitely had some lack of communication. And again, like they hit some tough shots, man. Like we're not going to sit here and play OKC, like, even though the record's bad or whatever. Like, Ty Jerome came in hit tough shots. Like, Giddy hit a tough, couple tough shots. If I feel like, you know, Earl was was cashing threes and stuff like that. And, and yeah, we had some com communication breakdowns, but it's not like, you know, he's shooting 60% from three on the year. You know what I mean? So it's just some of that, too. Because remember, like, you miss a couple more of those, those shots, you know, two or three more of those shots, one of them being a three, then you're talking about a seven-point swing. Like, we get... Danny or somebody like that to cash another three. Now you're talking about a 10 point differential. Like, and now you start to pull away from them instead of it being such a close game. Like, it's a make or miss league, man. And they came in here and lit us up, you know? So. And I know you pride yourself on being a, you know, low turnover guy, back to back games for you, 10 assists, no turnovers. What do you think was working so well for you? So, team hitting shots. And then, you know, not turn it over, not not to be like cliche or nothing, but just being smart, seeing the defense, not turn it over. And then, you know, I'm not the flashiest pass in the world. So, you know, sometimes it just comes down to guys hitting threes. I mean, I'm pretty sure I got an assist for Pope banking in that three to, to win the game, basically. And, you know, that's a, that's a good play on his end. I mean, I drew the help or whatever, but it wasn't nothing like too crazy. Like, he had to bank it in. So, thank you, Pope. Thanks, Spence. No problem. Last question to Christos. Hey, Spencer. Hope you're doing well. Congratulations on the win for Uh For you personally, that performance, that win, how how confidence booster for you is this? How big confidence booster for you is? Me personally? Yes. Oh, nah, bro. Like, that, uh, 2010 ain't really like what's going to boost my confidence. No, uh, not to sound like crazy or nothing. Like maybe if it was like 40 and 15, I'd be sitting here like swagging on y'all. But I mean, like people put 20 and 10 every night. Like I'm I'm happy that we won though, because that would have been a really bad loss. Like OKC is not the greatest team in the world. Um, so it's, it's more so about the win than anything. But yeah, I'm not going to swag on y'all for 20 and 10. That's, that's, that's not me.